As Anne of Green Gables would say, I'm so glad I live in a world where there are Octobers. As we head into the end of this month, it's been a great ride. From many road trips to warm home-cooked meals, exploring new places and enjoying gorgeous autumn days, it's all been a blast. Here we see my daughter eating what I'm pretty sure is some kind of straw wrapper on our way to one of my most recent favorite adventures that we had this month, which was a day trip my husband, daughter, and I took to Park County, Indiana for their Covered Bridge Festival in mid-October. The festival spans multiple towns and covered bridges all over the area with, of course, tours of covered bridges, shopping, beautiful fall colors, and even a pony ride if you're lucky. We went and saw two particular covered bridges in the area that we visited. They were so interesting to me. Somehow, when I heard the phrase covered bridge, I was thinking of some kind of almost medieval type structure, ancient and wooden with, I'm not really sure what details, but something just really ancient and architectural looking. Instead, the bridges look for all the world like the exterior of a house conveniently propped between two outcroppings of land over water. And inside, they did not disappoint, filled with the kind of sturdy, old-looking wood pieces and crossbars you might expect. It was a bitterly cold day, and my daughter was dressed up like a chicken in our attempt to keep her warm. My husband graciously pushed her stroller all over Christendom as we wandered the area throughout the afternoon. The two covered bridges we went to see are actually quite close together, still connected by an old town square, revitalized by new businesses in the old shops and buildings. The area is small and surrounded almost entirely by wildlife, and the remnants of what quite clearly used to be a place humming with activity. There's an old church, presumably once peopled by a faithful congregation, but now left open to the elements and otherwise undisturbed almost like stepping back in time, a de facto museum of history. Some buildings in the square are also still largely unused. It felt like getting a glimpse into something secret to peek inside those old buildings. My husband also enjoyed the shops, hitting the jackpot at one of the local stores that sells Fitz's root beer one of his favorite types of soda, and one we had not yet seen outside of St. Louis. He was ecstatic. Well, what'd you get today, baby? Gold. <laughs> okay, sweet root beer gold. We certainly took home a haul from our perusal of shops in town, but it was also nice to slow down, relax, and explore the plaza at a leisurely pace. Our daughter was practically comatose by the time we hit the second bridge, but Jeremy and I were fascinated, wondering at all the history around us, in a place we likely never would have experienced if it hadn't been for the festival. One of the loveliest parts of the covered bridge exploration, to me at least, was the meandering stream wending its way quietly through the valley. Half filled already with fallen leaves, it seemed in no hurry to go anywhere, just like our afternoon. Since our daughter has been born, my husband and I haven't taken as many opportunities as we used to, to go on an adventure. So it was an exciting adventure for us as a family, baby in tow and all, to take a family adventure of our own, however gently and slowly to explore some of our state history and see some really beautiful fall foliage on the way. When we get home from a long day out and about, I usually like to read at least a couple books to my daughter Abby to give her a sense of coming home and also, and this is crucial, winding down for the night. She loves being read to, usually, and it does seem to help calm her down and prepare her for bedtime. One of her favorite books, thoughtfully gifted to her by her aunt, is God is Good, 
all the time. I particularly like it for this time of year because it has a lot of fall and winter imagery with things like snow, hats and boots, and autumn foliage. Sometimes though, she gets a little antsy, so we have to rush a little bit to get through. And then it's time for another evening quote unquote tradition, one that has become more frequent and necessary with Abby becoming so active all the time, tidying the nursery. We didn't take time before we left for the festival to tidy it up, so it's time for it now. Abby often watches with interest and usually attempts to help in some way, as first go the blankets, then toys, then clothes and miscellaneous, and finally the books. Incidentally, keeping the bookshelf tiny is a full-time job as she considers it her full-time job to take all the books off the bookshelf and then peruse them at her leisure. Abby seems to have decided, as of this week particularly, that she is going to start walking, as in everywhere. Suddenly she's so confident and curious to explore everything. It's nerve-wracking but also exciting. I guess I could say I really have a toddler now. Once we put Abby to bed for the night, that's when I can focus on other projects, which sometimes is just relaxing. Tonight it's taking the time to read a recent letter from a family member, the nice paper and ink handwritten feel you just can't get from texts or emails. Then I can take my time and write a response. I also recently got some postcards to send out, and it's fun to imagine people getting some mail, other than bills or the like. Life in our fiercely lovely, quiet and orderly small town seems to flow with the seasons. I love to watch the interplay of sunshine and blue skies on these lovely fall afternoons. I also have been intrigued by local sightings of seasonal wildlife, such as deer. I know they can be quite common around here, but I still can't get over their frequent utter stillness. And with cooler weather comes a desire for hot meals. This evening, it's keto naan bread and keto chicken florentine, two recipes that are so good my husband looks forward to them regardless of how many carbs they contain. The only thing about keto naan bread is, that because of the ingredients, the whole mixing process needs to happen pretty swiftly, otherwise the dough won't mix properly. But this time it was a success. Then it's time to roll out the dough, otherwise be prepared for some of the floofiest naan this side of Texas. Do you have any favorite meals or drinks that you particularly enjoy during the autumn season? Let me know in the comments. I would definitely say I trend toward heartier meals in the fall. So casseroles, soups, and meat dishes feature prominently. And my husband has really gotten me into pumpkin bread. Wow, is that stuff good. We love our chicken and naan dishes in this house, and getting to eat it all together makes it that much better. And late one evening this week, we got together with some friends and carved jack-o'-lanterns out of the pumpkins we've had for a couple weeks now. I was seeing the jack-o'-lanterns pop up everywhere around the neighborhood and figured that this was my neighbor's way of telling us it was time to get going on some jack-o'-lantern carving. So we did. Cool. 
I hope your October is going peacefully, splendidly, and at whatever pace works best for you. As we close out this month and look ahead to all the holidays, I hope you get to experience and enjoy all the festivities around you. Thanks for watching this video. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time.